as we hear from God's holy word today from the Old Testament book of wisdom known as Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their hard work. If either should fall, one can pick up the other. But how miserable are those who fall and don't have a companion to help them up. And if two lie down together, they can stay warm. But how can anyone stay warm alone? Also, one can be overpowered, but two can put up resistance. A three-ply cord doesn't easily snap. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, as we recognize our Sakahatchee Summer Service testimonies today on this Father's Day, and as we send out another mission crew to do some manual work, I couldn't help but think of the many ways that my own dear father, who now lives in heaven, spent time with his own hands working and building things. My father was amazingly creative and intuitive in figuring out how to do things. I remember at one point, he put up a divider between our dining room and our living room in order to turn our three-bedroom house into a four-bedroom house so that each of his three daughters could have a separate bedroom all of their own. At another time, he added an additional extra room onto the house so that his three children could use it as a playroom and an activity room that we could run around in and we could have fellowship meals and have friends and parties over there. It was a small little house on Hazelwood Road off the Sumter Highway, but he made it into a palace for each one of us with the work of his hands. Now, while I like to think that I have inherited some of my father's creativity, I have no carpentry skills at all. I can't even hammer a straight nail. I've tried at Sakahatchee camps before, and it always bends or I hit my thumb before I get the nail all the way in. I just don't have a knack, and I don't know how to use a circular saw or add on additions to a house. But when I look back at my father's life now and I look at my own life and my life's journey, I see that one of the enduring gifts that my father gave to me and passed on to me was his strong conviction that we are all called to be builders in some sense of the word. We are all called to build something with our lives using the gifts that God has given to each and every one of us. And so as I think about those gifts and what we are building It brings to mind that question, what are you building with your life and the gifts that God has given to you? What am I building with the gifts that God has given to me? We are called to be builders of God's kingdom in this place. As I thought about that question, I was reminded of an old parable that maybe some of you have heard before. It's an old story about two brothers who lived on adjoining farms for over 40 years. But one day, they had a huge disagreement between them. It was the first serious rift between these dear brothers in the 40 years that they had been living side by side. For all those 40 years, they'd been sharing scenery with one another. They'd been trading labor and goods with one another, helping each other in their farming. But one day, that younger brother decided to divert a stream through their land. And the older brother disagreed with this idea, and yet the young brother went ahead and did it anyway. Bitter words were exchanged, followed by long periods of silence. Their long collaboration as a family fell apart. They didn't speak to each other. They didn't acknowledge each other in town all because of that one disagreement. One morning, there was a knock on the door of the older brother's house. He opened the door, and he found a carpenter standing there, an elderly man who was holding a carpenter's toolbox. 
The elderly man said, I'm looking for a bit of work in town. Perhaps you could use a small few jobs around your farm here that I could help you with. And the older brother immediately said, well, yes, I absolutely have a job for you to do for me. I want you to look at that creek right over there, that creek that divides my farm from the farm right next to me. That neighbor of mine is actually my younger brother, and he diverted a stream so that there's this creek dividing our two properties, and I don't want that stream there anymore. So I tell you what, there's a pile, there's a pile of lumber out by my barn. I want you to take that lumber, and I want you to build an eight-foot-tall fence all along on my side of that stream so that I don't even have to look at my brother's land anymore. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And the old carpenter said, yeah, I think I've got the picture. Tell me where the nails are and I'll get to work. The older brother said, okay, I'll get you set up, but then I've got to go out of town for a day or two. I'll be back in a couple of days and when I get back, I'll pay you for the work that you've done. You understand what I want, don't you? Yes, sir, I think I've got the picture clear in my mind. And the carpenter set to work as the older brother went to town. He worked all night until it was too dark to work anymore, and he got up early the next morning and he started to work again. He finished up the job just as the older brother was pulling back into his farm. The older brother looked at what the carpenter had done, and his jaw dropped as his eyes got wide. There was no fence at all. That carpenter has built a bridge over that stream instead of a wall. What was he thinking? As the older brother got out of his truck, the younger brother started walking across that bridge. And before the older brother could say a word, the younger brother reached out his hand and his arms opened up as if he wanted to embrace his older brother in a hug. The younger brother said, I can't believe it. After all I've done, not listening to you, doing things against you, and saying bad things about you, you're forgiving me, and you built a bridge to renew and reinvigorate our relationship. I'm so sorry for the pain and hurt that I've caused you. The two brothers embraced tears in both of their eyes. The carpenter said, my job is finished here. I've done what I need to do. The brother said, oh no, don't leave yet. We've got other work for you. And the carpenter said, I'm sorry. I have to go because I have more bridges to build. My friends, there are lots of bridges that need to be built in our world today. As our nation celebrates Juneteenth tomorrow, we realize the bridges that are needed in race relations. When I think about Father's Day, I think about so many families that are hurting and struggling, and I think about the bridges that need to be built in family relationships. So many people in our world today are in need of friendship. They are in need of relationship. The scripture that we read today reminds us that God did not create us to be lone rangers in this world. I read a study it was conducted back in 2018 in the UK. It was back when Theresa May was Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and at that time she began to believe that there was a growing health concern in the UK. She appointed a new governmental position to address this health concern. She released funding, and it was a big part of her time as Prime Minister to address this particular health concern. Do any of y'all know what it is? Loneliness. Loneliness. She said that her studies showed that somewhere around 15% of the people living in the United Kingdom at the time were often or always lonely, feeling alone, often or always. Some of those people were socially isolated, but not all of them. Some of them were surrounded by people just like we're surrounded by people today in this sanctuary, and yet deep down inside, they felt alone. They could have a thousand friends on th Facebook, a thousand followers on their Twitter account or their Instagram account, 
and yet they felt isolated and alone. Many of those people were just like you and just like me, having that deep need that the scriptures talk about, the need for a relationship. You know, in the book of Genesis, when it tells us about how God created the world, everything God created was good or very good. The only thing, the very first thing that God said was not good was for man to be alone. We are not created to be alone. We are created for community. A few years ago, I was meeting with a pastoral counselor friend of mine. He's worked with adolescents for many, many years. And I asked him what he was seeing as a growing concern among young people in the community today. He said, you know, I've always noticed that when I've worked with young boys that they have difficult time making friends and sustaining friendships. They feel awkward in their adolescent years and it's hard for them to reach out. But girls typically banded together a lot. You'd always see girls in clusters and groups together, girlfriends. But lately I've been noticing that girls are having a difficult time making friends as well. Girls are having a difficult time knowing how to sustain and become friends with others. And he said, I've been thinking about it and digging into it and trying to figure out what has caused this change. And surely social media is proud of it. We're always on our phones or on some sort of digital device and we think that's a connection, but it's not really. Texting people is not the same as talking to people, being with people. But that's just the low-hanging fruit. He said, the more I dug into it, I realized that these young people did not see their parents engaging with their friends. Their parents are no longer inviting people over to their home for dinner. You know, there was a day and a time when families in a congregation always made sure that the preacher was at somebody's house for lunch. Not so much anymore. (laughs) We don't invite people over. Our young people do not see us engaging socially with friends. I checked around with some of my friends and some of my colleagues in ministry, and I found out that there is a lot of loneliness There's an awkwardness because of the divisiveness in our nation. We are afraid to trust others and get too close to others and get in conversations for fear that they'll think about things differently than we think about things and we won't know what to talk about. And yet, my friends, we have more in common than we have that divides us. We are all God's human family together. There's a story that was told a long time ago about a Promise Keepers gathering. Promise Keepers was one of those movements to try to bring men together. The interesting thing about that gathering that struck me is that the announcer on the speaker, thousands of men gathered together in a football stadium. The announcer on the speaker asked, On the count of three, I want all of you to shout out loud the denomination that you belong to. What church are you affiliated with? On the count of three, all of you shouted out at one time. There were some people who shouted out Methodist, others Presbyterians, others Baptist. Some people had a really long name like Church of God, Congregationalist, Independent. But all of those names were shouted out at one time, and you could hardly distinguish one denomination from the other as everybody was speaking at the same time. But then the speaker said this, I want you now on the count of three to shout out at the same time who it is that you follow with your heart and your life, who it is that brought you here that you want to draw closer to, And on the count of three, everyone in that auditorium, in that stadium, shouted out the name of Jesus. And the speaker said, this is to remind us that there is one who will draw us together, the community of faith, when we follow in his way of life. The scripture today reminds us that we are not called to be lone rangers, that we are stronger together as a people 
We are stronger together. We can face whatever the future throws at us when we have one another, when we can encourage and lift up one another when life knocks us down. And when we encounter the cold shoulders of this world, we can keep each other warm with the warmth of God's love for each one of us. May we draw closer together, my friends, as a community. I do encourage you once again to join a small group, either a Sunday school class or one of these small discussion groups that's coming up. And if you need a friend, if you are looking for deeper relationships, authentic relationships, I encourage you to speak with Christine Taylor, our Director of Engagement, and she will help connect you with volunteer opportunities or small group opportunities where you can meet others to do this journey of life with together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it be true for each one of us. Amen.